rise on our friends. Bible says in Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Question to you tonight, are you glad this afternoon to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. If you are glad that he has made you, let's go ahead and let's worship the Almighty God. Let's thank him, the giver of life. The giver of peace, the giver of strength. Like Paul says, I am what I am by his grace. Let's thank him for his grace upon your life, upon your home, upon your family, upon all you do. Not by power, not by mind, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Father, we celebrate you. We honor you, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. You have been good, you have been good, you have been good. You have been good in the morning, in the new day, in the evening, in the night. When we are not good, back. Father, we want to say thank you. Jehovah, we want to bless you. Our rock, we say thank you. Our strength, we honor you. Our supporter, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done. All you are doing and all you are about to do, Father, we say thank you. We give you praise. We bless your holy name. We say thank you, Father. Oh, yes, God, Jehovah. Oh, good God, we, bless. we celebrate you in our life. We say thank you, Lord. If not for you being on our side, you are going to be. Let's thank you, Lord, as a church that we are bouncing. As we celebrate the eighth years of God's faithfulness, He has been faithful. He has been good. He has been moving us from strength to strength. He has not allowed the agenda of hell to prevail. Only carry Kasu to Yedebo Yedebo, Rata Tata Yedebo Sukuba, Rika Rata Tata Yedebo Yedebo Yedebo, Rika Uto Makare Yedebo Sukuba, Only Rata Yedebo God, we say thank you. We give you praise. We wash your mouth. We hear about you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are so good. Oh, you are so Oh, <laughs> 
God did that in the name of Jesus. Father, as we have come to the woman, different types of issues. The woman, the woman of issue of God, touch and she was born. My Lord, is your power and your grace. God. Touch me, your people, in a new way in the name of Jesus. Move our peace and keep that in the name of Jesus. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name, we have praise. Praise the Lord. Let's jump those hands to the Lord. You can sit to your friends and the people on the left of the right says, Welcome. Happy anniversary. I think I know happy anniversary. Let's go out together. Let me go to the portal. This is something happening, something happening today, hallelujah. And we rejoice with the Almighty God for what He has done. So, that be something to every one of us. Welcome today, special day. Every day is special day because the moment God is there, it's unique. And we want to trust God that no life will be the same with the kingdom from Jesus.
manager for the African Heritage Churches in the UK and um, I really thank Pastor Tylo, I always say he's my twin brother because my own twin brother is a man. So Pastor Tylo and Pastor Lara Fregene for giving me this great opportunity. I do not take it for granted at all. It was really within a short period of time and I also welcome Pastor Ayo Fatoshi. Thank you so much and Thank you, everyone that has come today. I will take much of your time. Um, Compassion UK is a Christian ministry, and we focus on releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. It was started in 1952, and almost the same time when we started over 70 years ago. And with that, it has been releasing children in 25 in the poorest countries in the world. And we have projects in about 8,000 churches. And also we've released about 2.2 children out of poverty, 2.2 million children out of poverty. Now it's a journey. And they always, it's always 
um, you start sometime from the womb right through the university when the child is taking off. And I'll just show you quickly. This is Trump. This is one of the child profile, which you know you can take up at the back of the stand. This is a potential child, and uh, most of them have no poverty. They do not have any work. They are homeless. And it is when one of us has laid upon your heart to say, yes, I'm going to join you with this child. Not even the monetary aspect, which is just a pound a day, and it's 28 pounds a month. Not the monetary aspect, but really nurturing that child and giving that child the life and the love of Jesus. The life and the love of Jesus. You will not know. I'm beginning to, because this guy, his name, the little boy, his name is Sean. And I prophesy that this child would be a Christian in the future. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to them. And that is how we disciple children. His name is Trump. And I decree today that as you take up this child, as God lays it upon your heart, this child will be the president in the future in the name of Jesus. Uh, apart from the monetary aspect, you are giving this child the holistic value of a spiritual development. You pray for the child. You can use the app actually to you know, download and just release that word of prayer into their lives. And God will take control. And um, the good thing today is we have one of our colleagues in our midst. Her name is Liz. She's gone through the program. She's from Uganda. And she's going to tell you her story. And I pray in the name of Jesus that even as you hear this story, the Lord will connect with your hearts. And as you journey with the partnership of compassion, the Lord will connect and bless you. And you release that, you know, that love of Christ into another person. And we can make more disciples of children and of Christ all over the world in Jesus' name. I welcome you to the floor. Lee from Uganda. She's now in the UK. She has a family. She works in the UK now. So she's here with us. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pastor Kenny. My name is Liz. I am Ugandan. And I don't live very far from here. I live in a place called Andover. And it's a great opportunity to speak about compassion, share with you my testimony. Uh, we all come from different walks of life, but mine goes like this. I was affected by the AIDS HIV pandemic. Predominantly, it affected the Eastern and the southern part of Africa. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> Yes, so as I was saying, I um, come from the eastern part of Uganda. We were affected by the HIV pandemic, so my father, who was well off before, um, contracted HIV, was a polygamous gentleman. So his wives naturally contracted the HIV, and um, together with our last one, they, they died uh, shortly after, and this left us homeless. And my mother, who was the second wife, um, <clears throat> was left HIV positive with my sister and I to raise. And it's through the aid support organization of, um, of Uganda that she was able to encounter someone who, who was going to church and who had a, heard about this organization that partners with um, churches to release children from poverty in Jesus' name, and this is the organization. So my mom, we were going to church, so she naturally asked this friend to take us in so that we could be in the catchment area of that church, and subsequently, due to our desperation, we were both rejected with compassion. And I'm happy to declare that our lives were drastically changed. We weren't going to school, we weren't going to church, we were looking after our HIV positive mother and tilling the land. We had moved in with our grandmother. Now, having been enrolled into the compassion program, my sister and I 
were able to start going to school, we were registered with, uh, <clears throat> with a healthcare facility to look after us when we were good and well, and look after our mom. Now, my sister got a sponsor first, and the sponsor, my sister's sponsor, wrote to her and us as a family. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Bordy um, really got involved. His family got involved in ours. They, they asked after us, they cared for us, they sent us prayers, they sent us pictures, and they sent a gift. It was a small gift, maybe. It was about maybe $10 then. But those of you who have lived in Africa know very little can go a long way. And that was the case. My sister started, my mom started out a chapel business with this, you know, windfall, as it may have been. And we were able to, my mother was able to create a sustenance out of that. So she didn't have to worry about school and her medical care. And when she got unwell, there's a community around church. They looked after us, they looked out for us when mom was in the hospital. And they mentored us and supported us and provided for us and walked with us through life. My sister was not academic, she is a hairdresser family. And I went on to university because we lived in a in a slum area. Compassion realized that they put together the funds to put them in boarding schools for the focus on my academia. And when my mom eventually died, they looked for a family member who could look after us while they continue to provide it when they do. And I went on to business school and become an accountant. And I worked for Barclays Bank Uganda for a while before I moved here to get married to my husband. We currently serve at a church in Andover and we are gifted with three beautiful children. I do Compassion, but because they gave, I'm able to give, I'm able to support others who are unfortunate as well. And I believe the work of sponsorship, the work of partnering with Christ, and the work of partnering with church has transformed. For example, the community in my family moved in does not exist anymore. That slab does not exist because that church partnered with compassion and changed lives, changed families. There was no poverty in that area anymore. That church has moved on and grown, and many of our fellow our compassion students have become pastors, they are ministers. My friends are in high places because I was placed in a high place by someone who believed in the work of Christ and believed in the work of compassion. I'm forever thankful. I have stayed in touch with my sponsor, and it is an amazing, uh, glorious relationship. And in case you look at those children and try to imagine the life behind the smiling faces because just like them, I was one of them. They borrowed a dress from one of the girls in church so I could look good in my pictures. So somebody would see me presentable like that. So what's the story behind a child man? Try and see through that and try and see the future you could hold for such a child. Thank you for this opportunity, and again, I'm Liz, and this is an amazing church, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and um, I'll just leave you with this. The Bible says in Proverbs 19, 17, it said, Whoever is generous to the poor lives the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deeds. So you're not just doing it for compassion, you're not just doing it for anyone, but you're doing it to the Lord. And the Lord said, he will repay you for your good deeds in the name of Jesus. And to cap it all, he also said in Proverbs 21, verse 13, he said, whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and the and not be answered. It will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So I, as the Lord lays it upon your heart, you can just pick a child profile and, um, you know, not show them spiritually. The money is not really um, the real thing, but the real thing is making them to dream big and to know and love Jesus for the rest of their lives. Thank you so much for this opportunity, sir. Thank you, and God bless you. More blessings unto this church in Jesus' name.
Therefore, you will not walk in darkness. Light cannot coexist with darkness. John chapter 1, verse 5, scripture says the light shines in the darkness, and darkness cannot put it out. That is, please, when light shines, light exposes. John chapter 3, verse 20, scripture says, everyone who does evil in the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. I don't know, maybe you've been in the church before, maybe you lost something in your, in your room and you can't find that particular object because there is no light there. And the moment you turn on the light, what happened, what, what was hiding, then is revealed because light exposes. So all the works of darkness in the name of Jesus the Christ as the light of God shines, they will be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. Light shines. Isaiah 16 verse 1, the light has shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is with the Lord. Light also gives direction. Uh, I have noticed that light attracts. Uh, I, I, I have a cousin, um, uh, this is actually uh, older than myself. Um, as I think it was around, maybe, I think it was in his, his 30s then. This is my cousin couldn't stay on his own, even though then he was already a big man. You ask him to stay on the soul in the room where people are not, he will be scared. And you know that sometimes kids say, no, no, I can't stay in there because it's dark. But when the light is on, even little children are attracted to where light is. I'm going somewhere with all this point, I'm raising them up light. So scripture says in Isaiah that the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shone. Who is this great light or what is this great light that we're talking about? When you read Matthew chapter 4 verse 12, Jesus after his baptism, uh, and then scripture says heaven opens over him and there was a voice from heaven this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and immediately after the public endorsement by his heavenly father scripture says he was led by the spirit into the wilderness and there he was tempted. Fast the 40 days 49 and after that experience scripture says his fame went abroad. So the next day we discovered in Matthew chapter 4 from verse 12. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Cavan, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. What? Isaiah chapter 9. Because in that chapter 9, that is where we, we, you know, that lovely uh, verse that we use for Christmas, a uh, carol services and things like that. You know, unto us uh, a child is born, unto us the son is given the same chapter. So Jesus literally walked into fulfillment of prophecy, prophecy that came concerning him many years before Jesus would come to heaven. And so the Bible says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, the garden of the Gentiles the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death light has done. Ladies and gentlemen this light we're talking about is the Lord Jesus. He fulfilled the prophecy from the mouth of Isaiah. Light has come. 
So you don't have to remain in darkness because the light that you have been waiting for, you, you, you received this prophecy many years ago, but well, that light has come. That's why when he was brought into the temple in Luke chapter 2, remember Simeon. Simeon had received a word from the Lord that he would not see death until his heart, you know, would behold the Savior, the consolation of Israel. And when they brought Jesus to the temple uh, to be presented to his father, uh, and Simeon held Jesus in his hand and he began to speak. He began to prophesy. He took him up in his hands and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. So Jesus is this light we're talking about. And Jesus himself testified in John chapter 8, verse 12. He said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Read in John chapter 12. There's several verses in scriptures to confirm that Jesus is this light. We're not talking about floodlight that you see in the stadium. We're not talking about some of this fancy light that we have now. We're talking about the great light, the light that shines, and darkness can't put that light out. The light that exposes and reveals, the light that attracts, the Lord Jesus. So he came. Light of the world. So why did he come? What was his mission here on earth? John chapter 3, verse 16 tells us, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only one, his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son to the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, or anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. Now, Jesus did not come to the world to condemn the world. And so when I see people who feel that they have a ministry of condemnation, uh, I wonder who they serve. Because even Jesus, the light, did not come to condemn the world. But the world, through him, might be saved. But yes, scripture says, even though he didn't come to condemn people, but those who failed to believe, having heard about him, having seen the light, and they have intentionally and deliberately refused that light, scripture says they are judged or condemned already. And why? Scripture says in verse 19, and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil in the light and refuse to go near it for fear, their sins will be exposed. So he came to take people out of darkness into his light. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation who don't pursue people belonging to God is all special possession that you should show forth the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So he came to do that. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. Scripture says, give it to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light who has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and he has conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son, the son of his love, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. So he came for that purpose, to destroy the works of the devil because darkness represents Satan. 
And that is why, can I just tell you this very quickly? It's not part of my uh, message. Or just to help someone uh, so that the grip of Satan can, uh, so that can lose his grip over your life. Can I tell you something? The only way that Satan can actually take advantage of an individual is that when you're doing something that is not pleasing to God and you know that, and you keep it in the dark, Satan flies there. Have you, have you not, you know, so, sometimes may, maybe you told a lie, and then the Holy Spirit is coming to you with conviction that when you just said that it's not true, go and tell the truth. And then suddenly, somebody is saying to you that, no, your reputation. So people will start calling you lie. Who is, who is doing that? Satan. So what, what, what is it saying to you? Keep that in the dark. So you will then have to tell another lie to cover that lie. And then get another lie to cover that lie. Yeah? And then layer upon layer upon layer. Because Satan understands that the moment you bring what is in the dark into light, he loses his power and grief over you. So he doesn't want you to do that. So he came. To deliver us from darkness. And this is where I'm going. So it's mission. And then it's commission. The instruction from the light itself. The commandment and the order from the light. To those who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. When he was leaving. Uh, in John chapter 9 verse 3. He said, but they asked him, they saw a man who was born blind, and they said, Master, who see? This man or his spirit? Now, they said someone was born blind, and they were asking if the man, if his sin was responsible for his blindness, even though he was born blind. You know, can you see something religious spirit? Because that's, that's a very terrible question to ask. So where did he see? In heaven? Or in his okay, other school? Anyway, Christ said, Neither this man nor his spirit see, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must walk the works of him who sent me while he is The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, the first question. So when, when he said he said he was he was here under his name, he as, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, is Christ still in the world today? Okay. And yes, sister said yes. Uh, so where is Jesus? In us. Okay. In us. Okay. Living us by his spirit. Is that not, is that not true? Okay, but Jesus is not here on earth physically. Okay, he went to heaven. He said he will send the promise of his Father, Holy Spirit. So he's at the right hand of the Father, not sleeping, not relaxing, not eating roast potato, but he's there actively engaged. And just says he heaven leaves to make intercession. So it's very important. It's interesting for us. It's in heaven doing that. But he lives in us now by his spirit. Now, so he said, as long well as I'm in the world, I have the light of the world. So he's left now. Okay? His disciples saw him when he was being received into heaven. And the angel understood that the same way he was received into heaven, he will come. So we're waiting for him to return. Now, the implication of that. So is left. But we are here. So when you read in Philippians chapter 2, how many minutes do you have? Oh, huh? here. Uh, 12 minutes. Okay. 12 minutes. So that's uh, our finish of uh, 
250. Yeah? All right, okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Scripture says, Do everything without complaining and hiding, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God shine like bright light in the world full of crooked and perverse people. We know Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. Is that not true? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. It was the light, the great light, saying to them, you are the light of the world. God is lifting you. God is prospering you. God is elevating you. God is blessing you and giving you opportunities. And all of all the things that you have received from the Lord and things that you can point to as a blessing from the Lord. God is doing so for a purpose. He wants you to shine to his glory. Jesus has left this world, but he left us here as light bearers. And this light must not be kept under a basket. Say no one light a candle only to put it under a basket. What is this basket? Anything that covers light from shining is basket. Sin. Unbelief, slothfulness, fear, selfish ambition, religious spirit, friendship with the world, living according to the patterns and ideas of this world. All these things will cover light that you have from shining. He said, as the Father sent me, so I am sending. We are Jesus' hands, we are his legs, we are his mouth. We represent him here on earth and he wants us to shine in the darkness. Because what we have, what it takes for darkness to leave when light is introduced. So very quickly, in eight minutes or so, what are the things we need to do practically to allow our light to shine? Because it said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All the investment of this great light in your life, my life, is for us to shine so that God's name might be glorified. I love the way the person uh, uh, put it, the uh, person put it. Say, so here's another way to put it. You are here to light, uh, bringing out the, the, the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on the light stand. Now that I've put you there on the hilltop, on the light stand, shine, keep open hands, be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you will prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. My brothers and my sisters, time is running out. These are not the days to, you know, all these religious games that we play sometimes, and the uh, time is out, running out. And Jesus is counting on us, is looking up from heaven, and is saying, My investment in this life must not be a waste. Because he must see the fulfillment of the travail of his soul and rejoice. And that labor is what he lived for. How he loved people. He went and I mean, this morning I was I was I was reading studying the life of Jesus. He will 
will teach you in the daytime. I dress people going from one temple to another teaching. And then scripture says at night we will go to the mountain of the bed. Do you want to commune with his father? And then the following one scripture says, and then people would have gathered in the temple waiting for him to teach them. What a life of sacrifice. Why? Because he wanted more people to come out of darkness into light. What can we do? Or what must we do? Trust the need that you are in light here. Number two, don't be afraid of darkness. For a very long time in my country of birth, I remember when I was uh, much younger than this. What we used to hear then is that politics is a dirty. Don't go there. The devil is there. And no wonder we say what we say today is not true. Why? The church who is supposed to be light is afraid of darkness. Even if Satan is there. Is that not where we should go and share as light? Because light only finds relevance in darkness. Your the light, the touch, whatever it is on your phone, is just as case, number two. We don't need to hear why, because we have light. But take the same phone, that small phone, into a dark room and then put on the touch on your phone. What happens there? There's light there. And darkness can't stand that light. Don't be afraid to go to places where the Lord wants you to shine the light. Your people, your school, it's your platform to show. Some of us are waiting for the time that we ordained Reverend Bishop Pastor before you start shining the light. What you don't know is that your place of work is your platform to shine the light. We have to. Desire and pursue to be the best in your field. Strive for excellence in all you do. And be kingdom minded and missionary. To be missionary means to live every day as a missionary. You wake up in the morning, oh Lord, I am the missionary today. Lead me to hearts that heal. Are prepared that you're working on, and you'll be amazed how God will orchestrate things, will arrange things, and you will meet someone, and then you will say something, and then that person will open up, and then you will preach the gospel, and then something is happening. I will not forget my my trip, or I went to Spain for, uh, for 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 a meeting, and I was coming back at the airport. Interesting, I so I met someone from Argentina, uh, a woman. With, with our children. And I just, we decided to it by helping her to carry, uh, she was strong as oh, hey, hey, man, can I, can I help you? And then I helped her. And then she opened the door. And I didn't know that she had just lost a son. That son took his wife. And before that time, her husband left her. And this woman was in a terrible state. I didn't know. I saw a need and I was going to meet that. Then I helped you, man. Just, just, just act of kindness. Let me help you carry your bag. And she thought that she was weeping right there at the airport. And I did to witness Christ to her. And then led her to Christ. And then John on the plane. The person sitting beside me, guess what? Where he went? The other person was a drunk man from Argentina. And then the guy just he was talking about food. I said, Well, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what to talk to you about food. <laughs> and they say, yes, what do you do? And then we said, no. And then right there, beside me, he said, I have been struggling to stop 
uh, I'm addicted to uh, to to all this um, not not drugs, but um, is it weed or something, smoking and things like that. He said, "Can I stop?" I said, "Yes, of course you can." I said, "I used to be a chain smoker myself. I wanted to stop, but I couldn't stop until I met Jesus." And the same week I gave my life to Christ, the desire for it left me and sickness has been over 20 years. The spoken that brought me, in fact, I went to I said, Jesus can help you. He said, Who is this Jesus? He introduced Christ to give all the play led into Christ. That's, that's what we are here for. And it's my prayer that the hand of the Lord will come upon us in flesh. It will do a deep work within our hearts. His sweet or his will will become the meat that satisfied the longing of our heart. But you can't give what you don't have. You can't shine the light if you are not connected to the light. That's why I want to pray if you're here this afternoon. You don't know him. Or maybe you want to recommit your life to or maybe you want to say to him, Lord, I'm making a fresh commitment to live for you and not for myself. As I had to pass the time to come, just please put your right hand on your chest and ask him to come in.
us will begin to walk through the newness of your life in the name of Jesus. And we commit our Father, our Pastor, our Father, our Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, strengthen him more in the name of Jesus. Lord, they are over, he will continue to walk in your life in the name of Jesus. The agenda of hell over his life will be frustrated in the name of Jesus. He will continue to strengthen him, O Lord, and uphold him with the heart of the righteousness in the name of Jesus. He will not fail, he will not falter in the name of Jesus. And every one of us, Lord, the grace of God to serve you to the very end. The grace to reign with you in the last day, even to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's jump those hands in the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that one. Give the blessing of the prayer that the Lord has strengthened. Yes, we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus. We've gone to the stage of taking the job in the ministry. King. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be inviting our very own, our very own pastor, our pastor Mrs. Pastor Taiwo and Pastor Mrs. Thank you. 
Daniel.
Lord because you are the one that gave power to the point. Out of abundance that you have given to us, you have brought this to you. But we pray you are set the giver in the name of Jesus. You have set our offering in the name of Jesus. But we use it for your glory in the name of Jesus. Father, let your light shine in our finances in the name of Jesus. Open new doors of the Lord's name. And use us the glory of your name with glory. We book the order in our finances. Thank you, Father. Jesus, and we have heard. Is that necessary? Anyone else pray before? We give you that shape of our lives. Time is Word. Shout. I put the most of the next. Pastor Kenny now, and my sister that came to share her testimony. Thank you for coming. I'm going to trust you like my best. I'm going to scroll. Few announcements. On Tuesday, we're meeting online. Our Sunday school that we normally do on Sunday, we're going to do online. Time is 6.30. Please join us. And on Wednesday, the topic that we made uh, started meeting uh, last Wednesday was the talent was wow. It was about abuse. And then many are meeting this week. We will take it to the next level about sexual abuse. Sometimes we, as a church, we always ignore this thing. But it's just not that it's among us. So please, if you are not here uh, at work, join us and educate ourselves and our mind. I don't know. Don't say anything online. Again, we are not friends. I'm five thousand. So it's just not giving this minutes prayer. Please, thank God to pray. And want to say it. And we pray that the sick is the Lord in the place of prayer. The Lord. Speedily in that name. Um, before we close, we will invite Pastor Peter to pray for the church. But before we do that, I want to say this is what is that everyone knows. I'm just looking at the faces. I don't know what to say. But I have to say this. Please forgive me if I don't mention it. I want people to say, thank God for my first church. It's not my first church. My first church is my house. Don't be that big. I thank God for my member. My first member. My wife. And the, and the hair. Please understand. I thank God because they, they make this thing easy. Uh, when I look at my back, they, they cover my back very well. My house is good. And then, that's what she does. Sometimes I beg her to come and do it. Don't go for it. Sometimes I have to appreciate it. I want to appreciate my team. If I want you to carry children, I just that not It's a good problem. <laughs> but I want to thank God, team, that they are taking care of very much as well. And that's why I know I like to our service to get to next to next Because I remember when I was in DC, Pastor told me to go there, to do a little thing. For me to answer to that, to the department. I vow I'll never go back in DC. Because I know how they are going to be. I know that um, Sister Motorayo and I'd seen. Even some of them, when they come say they just walk in. They exactly depend on that. Right. 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 I see what you are doing tonight. You trust him, Baba, and the team. You can see when you sit down, you are ready to get them there. You will have to laugh at them. Not my money, it's always intact. 
always doing well. Our trustee, uh, the Pishola. Oh, the Pishola. Let me talk about it. Pishola is a, is a blessing to, to me personally. There's no way I would like to be up to date. Up to date. I think people think all the glory of that man's heart is a pillar to us. Thank God. So whenever I remember this apostle, you are done well. That's what I'm doing. You deserve to live well. Because when I see the way it looks, it does look good in my post. And I remember that most of our way anywhere, I'm serving God faithfully. And uh, we are still in a moment. The work is still ahead. The journey is still far. Uh, we are recruiting. Those who are recruiting at this point. More money work. Please, as Lord will permit you to join, please just speak your name and the Russians and I want to know the way that's going to be baptized with you. And I'm just saying, I'm ready to go. Because teenagers minister yesterday, they're powerful, and we will see more of them in this church and then they also. Kudos to you guys. And then who is again? The prayer intercessor, you don't see them. They are the fire, life fire of the church. They are always praying life. And then we thank God for your grace and your love for the work of God. And the Lord bless everyone. We can't give you anything. All we can say is to say thank you. And with your heart desire that will bring glory to God. The Lord will come to you in the name of Jesus. Pastor Ryan, please come again. Release. The world as we share and the Oh, bless you. Before you I'm sorry, thank you so much. I'm with a big guy. If today is your first time, please be patient. You know you are coming. Like this beautiful family, today is your first time. If today is your first time with the worship of us, we want to recognize you and we want to recognize you. Please give them a song that this way. We are happy people, yes, we love you. 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 Once again, I appreciate you for eight 
years in your faithfulness, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for what you are doing this And we rejoice even ahead of time because of what we know you're going to do in the future. Scripture says you declare the end from the beginning. And so we want to thank you for that. Thank you for this new season, this new phase. We ask for new beginning of joy, of grace, of peace, of fulfillment, of destiny. That this church will enter a dimension of your glory and grace that you have never experienced before. Whatever they ask to come in this assembly will come. Whatever they command to go, will go in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, all the people who are laboring together with the pastor, we pray because you are not unrighteous to forget the labor of the love of your people. So reward them abundantly and give them grace even to labor more in the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your light shine and let darkness dissipate in the name of Jesus Christ. So I bless you in the name of the Lord. I pray that the kingdom of will be different to you. The Lord accept your offering and remember all your sacrifices. May you rejoice to see the fulfillment of the trumpet of your soul. May the Lord bless you more and more. May your joy be full. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This, this labor to expand the kingdom will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. You will love the Lord and serve him till the very end. In the brightness of his life, you will see the path that is ahead of you. You will not walk in darkness. She will not stop. She will not fall. All these foundations from the pit of hell concerning anyone, the Lord destroys them in the name of Jesus Christ. From victory to victory, from glory to glory, in the name of Jesus Christ. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity, in the name of Jesus Christ. So go with the Lord's peace, go with His grace, and go in His love. Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Before we thank God, I want us to thank God. I didn't say you don't need to wash up. People wear washers. And the doctor and the doctor and the doctor and the doctor and the the media, the washers. So please bless us our May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the Lord of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, this of this chapel, all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house forever. You give a shout, say hallelujah. You need a new beginning.